Hi, welcome to another SEO hangout with Josh Brzezinski. That would be me. The first hangout of 2014. And uh, here's the things that I have to uh, rant about today in the SEO world. Um, there was a couple of hangouts with uh, our favorite John Mueller. And uh, he talked about a couple of things. And so also we had, there was a new person on one of his hangouts. And so I'll mention uh, that. So uh, and then I'll catch up and I'll uh, be done 2013, which makes sense, uh, which is appropriate because we're done 2013. Okay, so the first one is on December 6th. Um, I mentioned this a couple times, but John Mueller mentioned it. Uh, it's very important these days in SEO not to use search phrases as anchor text. Um, uh, John Mueller explicitly was, was explicitly asked what kind of anchor text is safe these days. And basically, he said, pretty much point blank, you cannot use search phrases in your anchor text. And it doesn't matter if it looks donated. It doesn't matter if it is donated. It doesn't matter if it looks natural anymore, rather. It doesn't matter if it looks natural. And it doesn't matter if it is donated. They have no way of tailing except by the anchor text, of your anchor text and the other anchor text on the page and the other anchor text on the site and what kind of site it is. It doesn't matter if it's your brand name either. That is, quote unquote, not recommended. So, um, uh, quote, descriptions of what you do are recommended, but uh, uh, what's not recommended is um, uh, using search phrase anchor text. So let me give you an example. So it, it's, it both counts both for internal links and for external links. So for internal links, for example, these days you cannot have keyword stuffing on your page. So for example, say it was a, a real estate site, and you'll say you want to have MLS listings Atlanta, MLS listings Boston, MLS listings Calgary, MLS listings Vancouver. You can't do that anymore. Um, what you would need instead for the internal links in that case would be listings, Vancouver, Chicago, Boston. You don't need to put them again and again and again and again. Google is perfectly good at um, telling what is about what based on the proximity of the text. And... Um, they will not allow that kind of keyword stuffing. That's not only is that part of Panda, it's also probably part of painting as well. And for external links, um, this is the kind of thing you'd want. So the sentence, instead of, instead of this is the bad thing. This is not what you want anymore. Um, and, and in my personal opinion, I wouldn't even do this at 10%. I would do this at 0% at this point. Uh, especially if you've been linking for the last few years, you already probably have too much of this going on already. Um, the, the sentence is, what you don't want would be a sentence like this. Go here for the best, and this would be the link, Atlanta MLS listings. That's not what you want. Again, what you do not want is a sentence that sounds like this. Go here for the best, and the link would be Atlanta MLS listings. What you do want instead is non-match anchor text. At worst, partial match anchor text, but, we're, uh, but preferably, in my opinion, now again, keep in mind, I'm pretty risk averse, but, quite frankly, very few of my client sites and very few of my sites get hit by penguins. So maybe it would pay to be somewhat risk averse. Uh, and so I would prefer a sentence that sounds more like this. Um, for, for Atlanta MLS listings that I found really helpful, check these guys out or this site too. And the link would be these guys or this would be the actual anchor text. And so Google is perfectly smart and knows very well that in that sentence, uh, it's about Atlanta MLS listings, and it's specifying this site and this site as a good place to find those. And so it will associate Atlanta MLS listings with those anchor texts without the anchor text being spammy, without them uh, be, being able to be triggered, triggering Penguin or triggering uh, Panda for that particular page on that particular site. So that's what I call non-match anchor text or non-search phrase anchor text. That's what I'm totally using these days to be as risk averse as possible, and that is exactly what John Mueller uh, specified. He didn't give the examples, those are my examples, but he specifically said not to use search phrase anchor text anymore, period. Okay, the next. Um, quick one, he mentioned that authorship, Google authorship is already being used for expert, quote unquote, expert relevancy. So um, definitely if you have an author tag and you've got a lot of people uh, in Google+, You've got a Google Plus account, you've got a lot of people in your circles, you've got a lot of interaction on your Google Plus, and you have an authorship uh, tag on the, some page you, you wrote, and you have a reciprocal link between the, the two of them. Um, that's definitely going to boost up your ranking for when people are logged in. 
for the SPU ranking, the Search Plus Your World, when they're logged into Google. And more and more people are getting logged into Google as, as we see as the stats go up. So it's going to be ranking more and more higher for more and more people. Whether or not it has a global rank, uh, we're not entirely sure but yet, but I don't think it's going to, but it might. Uh, a lot of people definitely have talked about it. Okay, now the next one, on December 10th, uh, John Mueller was asked, what does Penguin look for? And so he got a little bit specific as to exactly what Penguin is looking for these days. So this was very interesting, uh, also very similar to my uh, major leak I leaked last week about exactly how Panda works. If you want to know exactly how Panda works and also a uh, very impressive uh, Penguin fix to fix Penguin within two or three days. That's right, to fix Penguin within two or three days. Check out my last video. Um, you can find my videos at youtube.com slash jbachins, J-B-A-C-H-Y-N-S. You can also email me with any SEO questions at joshbashinsky at gmail.com. And you can also um, follow me at Twitter at joshbashinsky. You can also follow me on Google Plus as well. I'll I have one, and I have about 700 people who've circled me. I'm never on there, though. I just post my videos on there. I don't really go on there. But you can follow me there, too, if you prefer, if you don't have Twitter. Okay, so John Miller was asked specifically on December 10th what Penguin looks for, like he was the last week, uh, specifically asked what Panda looks for. And he said two things very specifically. He said, one, Penguin looks for spammy sites. So that is to say over-optimized pages, both, both on your site and for pages linking to your site. Because remember, as far as Google is concerned with their semantic latent index, every page that links to your index page is on your site, so to speak, or telling Google what your site is about. And that includes uh, both pages on your domain name and pages off of your domain name. That's how they consider, that's essentially how they consider your website. That's the whole basis of their, their uh, semantic latent index. Um, that is their semantic latent index for your site, right? That's what those words mean. Uh, it's been that way for years. And that's how Penguin works. It works on over-optimization of stuffed keywords on these pages. So Penguin both has an on-page and an off-page factor, but mostly an off-page factor, as he mentioned in, in point two, when it comes to over-optimized anchor text. So one, over-optimized pages is what Penguin looks for, and two, over-optimized anchor text. And this is exactly what he said, point blank from him. So that's interesting, I've long speculated that's exactly how Penguin works. Uh, John Mueller just confirmed it. So, yeah, another one for me. Um, <laughs> you know, whoop de doo um, So, the next thing is um, he talks about the disavow text for Penguin. And the disavow works on each site. I asked him specifically, does a disavow text work on the basis of... Um, like uh, like a mass uh, machine learning, or does it work like a robot's text for each site? And I asked him point blank, and he answered point blank that it does work for each site like a robot's text, um, so you don't have to worry about uh, them doing some kind of machine learning on it, at least not for Penguin. For Penguin, supposedly it'll work for you if you put enough aggressive anchor text, enough aggressive, if you've been aggressive in putting enough links I mean like 80 or 90% in there. However, don't do that. Um, there is a penguin fix that I have. This is no joke, I'm not lying. Uh, it does work, uh, provided that there's some things going with your site uh, that's not too spammy, and I can diagnose to see if exactly the fix will work for you. Uh, and it does, it will fix penguin within two or three days. That's right, I can fix penguin on your site within two or three days. I won't just tell anybody what this fix is. Obviously, uh, I'll play that very close to my chest, and so you can email me and ask, but we'll have to talk a little bit. I'll have to find out who you are, what your site is about, see if it'll even work for you, and then we can negotiate on price. So uh, I don't mean to be that guy who hides information. Usually, as you know, I like to give out as much information as possible, but I have come across uh, insane, insane uh, penguin fix, and it does work. And for the sites that it's going to work for, I can fix them within uh, two or three days. So uh, you can email me for that. Uh, although, FYI, uh, I'm going to be on vacation for January 2nd to 16th. So um, please do not email between January 2nd and 16th. Uh, email me when I get back on January 17th. But you'll probably ignore that anyway. Email me. But if you're wondering why I don't respond, it's because I'm going to be at the Edimex conference in Vegas, uh, January uh, 4th to 6th. And then I'll be on vacation in Vegas from uh, the 2nd to 16th. So um, that's why I'm not getting back to you. Uh, that's, that's for 2014, by the way, depending on when you're watching this video. If it's already in 2015, 
Uh, who knows when I'll be in vacation then if I even get to take vacations in 2015. Okay, and yes, so again, I have a fix for Penguin. Uh, it doesn't uh, kill Penguin entirely, but it does uh, obli obviate the need to worry about it. Uh, so it's a tricky little thing. It's not the 301. It's not, uh, it's not deleting pages. It's not uh, anything to do with links or a link detox program. I'm not speaking well or ill of that program. Um, but it, it has nothing to do with any of those things. It's completely new. No one knows about it. No one else is doing it. Uh, and uh, there's a reason why no one's talking about it, because if they did, then their Penguin hit site would no longer work. Uh, so contact me if, you, uh, if you're in a bind and you have to try and fix that. Okay, the next thing that uh, John Mueller mentioned uh, is that he did confirm again, he's mentioned this before, but he did confirm again that Google does look for social mentions to see what's better, quote unquote better. They do use third party recommendations uh, in terms of quality. He has mentioned with uh, Pierre Farr, they do use third party recommendations and they do use social mentions in the Panda algorithm. It's one check mark in the quality column. They have two columns, low quality and good quality. And social mentions is a good check mark and good quality. If other people are talking about your site on social, that's a piece of evidence for them that apparently your site is a quality site. And uh, for all the other, um, of course, the Missing All's 23 Questions is your primary uh, blog post you can read to get a general idea on what this quality metrics are, both in the the uh, positive column and the negative column. But I talked about a bunch of them in the last video, so go to my YouTube channel and check out my last video. As to, I speculated as to what a bunch of the positive and negative quality factors or trust factors for Google would be. Okay. Um, another thing that's really important uh, on social is the, the people ask, well, how do I get social to work for me? And um, uh, we do a lot of social uh, here. My team does a lot of social. I have a very uh, experienced, uh, I now a very experienced social um, consultant on staff. Uh, her name is Melissa. Uh, she might be showing up to some of my rants to provide you with some excellent, excellent social knowledge because getting traffic out of social is like the holy grail of internet marketing, right? Because everyone knows the writing is on the wall for, for black hat SEO, definitely. Um, and it is getting more difficult for SEO in general. Uh, so if finding a way to get traffic from social is the next big thing. And so Melissa is an excellent consultant at that. Please contact me if you have any questions about social. I can pass you on to her or I could probably answer them myself. Uh, and uh, the key is this, is it's finding your niche. It's finding your peeps on social. That is the difference between just posting random crap to your social profiles and maybe getting the occasional like and the occasional plus one. And the difference between that and uh, finding your niche. So how do you find your niche? How do you find your peeps? Well, that's uh, a question that's difficult to answer and it depends on your particular vertical, but it's actually fairly easy to find it and fairly easy to do if you know how, you, how to do it. And that's how you can get some traffic out of social. So uh, expect future rants, SEO hangouts about that, both how to use social for SEO, what, what signals they're using, Google's using to determine uh, your page quality in terms of social. I've mentioned them before, but I'll, I'll undoubtedly mention them again. And I expect in 2014 that social is going to get more important, that links are going to go down the importance list, and the social is going to move up, maybe even pass it. And uh, how to get traffic out of social is even more important. A lot of people have already tried. A lot of people have had success, uh, great success. And so we're going to be able to talk a, little, a lot more about that uh, in the coming Hangouts uh, for this year. All right. So um, another thing was mentioned um, on December. Okay, so December 16th to 19th, we saw a, a big release of some kind of algorithm. A lot of people uh, saw a huge change. In fact, some search engine results page uh, metrics uh, programs that watch the SERPs and see when there's a lot of change, like when a panda is released or a penguin's released, they detected a lot of change uh, December 16th to 19th. And um, uh, at the same time, Google uh, has been looking at a lot of networks like backlinks.com and uh, a few other uh, um, uh, link networks and has been uh, looking into the backlink profiles of people who have been using that and then 
hitting uh, people, even with if two or three or five or six or seven links in backlinks.com, uh, their network of sites, they've been checking that profile, and then they, even if you only have like a few links, they'll still hit you with a manual, uh, uh, manual penalty, uh, a natural uh, link notice. Now, um, there's a couple things that we have to watch about that. One, um, I think a lot of the flux was just because people had, um, uh, there was tons of uh, manual notices being put out at that time. Uh, Google went crazy over the Christmas period, as Matt Cutts tweeted, uh, with their manual team. Don't forget, they've got around on, on about 12,000 people over in India. That's their manual team doing manual actions. And so they have 12,000 people doing this. Huge call center. Uh, you can find proof of that because there's a hangout with them, and they mentioned that uh, it was early July, uh, early January 2012, I believe. So um, not only that, but I noticed they also got much more aggressive with it. Um, if you had a, a natural link notice, uh, partial action versus links, again, that's different than a manual link notice, uh, a natural links uh, versus site. Um, if they took the action versus links, your backlink, so they took action versus your site. Um, uh, I mentioned this a bunch of times in the past, but what you need to do uh, over this period in December 16th and 19th is what they did is they upgraded a lot of people's penalties from the, past, the partial link notice to the full manual action versus site. Again, silently and without warning, without notice, I noticed in at least six different sites, and I, I tweeted out and uh, some people confirmed that they saw this as well, um, Google sneakily upgraded their partial uh, partial uh, action, uh, a natural link notice versus links, just so partial action only versus the links, they upgraded it to a full-blown manual action versus the site, and then people saw ranking decreases at that time. So uh, check your webmaster tools if you had a, pa a partial link notice, because it may have been upgraded to, upgraded to a full uh, manual action versus the site. And so this is what we saw going on uh, December 16th uh, to 19th. Um, so make sure you check that out. And if you want to, if you have any questions about how to fix that or what you should do if that happens, again, by all means, email me, uh, joshpachinsky at gmail.com. Okay, uh, again, I want, I want to round out 2013, so I'm going to move on to the, the final stuff. On December 20th, John Mueller had a, a, another, uh, the final um, Webmaster Hangout, SEO Hangout, with a new Webmaster Analyst by the name of Zineb, a young lady. Uh, who um, some other people uh, keep mentioning, hey, Zineb is there, and uh, apparently they think she's kind of cute. So that might be a good reason for you to tune in to watch the John Mueller Hangouts. Um, so anyway, so on December 20th, uh, they also leaked very interesting stuff as well. First thing is what I like to call the curious case of Gary. I mentioned the curious case of Gary before. Gary was back. And uh, there's this, that's, uh, I, this is my name for him. I don't know if that's his real name. But there's a person, let's call him Gary, and he went on and he droned on forever, as he typically does, about the problems with his site. And he thought maybe this, in December 16th to 19th, that week, maybe that they re-released Penguin. There was a lot of other speculation that this might have been the case. So he asked uh, John Mueller, and John Mueller said no. He strongly implied that Penguin was not just rerun uh, on December 16th to 19th, and that Penguin will not be rerun for quite a long time. And so there's no reason to believe that it's going to be, it was rerun or that it will be rerun uh, up until probably their standard schedule. They've released it twice in May before. They'll probably won't release it till May 2014 again. So again, if you have Penguin issues, if you're doing the delete and disavow, or, or if you have nothing, no choice but to do the delete and disavow, uh, you've got to wait until May for that one. Again, if you want to try and circumvent that, contact me and I'll see if I can help you out. Um, the next thing I talked about is that, uh, here's an interesting one. So someone asked, okay, you said I could use um, my analytics to determine my usage metrics, my bounce back to SERP rate. This is definitely used as part of Panda. I think it triggers Panda and then is used as a metric as part of Panda um, to determine uh, what sites are not satisfying people because they're going to the SERP, they're clicking the result, they're going to the page, they don't like it for whatever reason, it's too slow, too convoluted, the design is ugly, the content is no good, the content is, they have to scroll too far to get it, they go back to the SERPs page, they click on the result. This is very well documented at this point, part of Panda, either in triggering it or part of it, or in my opinion, both. And you can watch the Hangout last week where he got very specific as to how this is actually part of Panda. 
So the question is, well, what if I either am so new or I've been hit so bad by penalties that I don't have any organic traffic to tell what they do? Because apparently this only counts for organic traffic. And also, statistically, John Mueller has also told us in months past that direct traffic behaves very differently on your site than, say, organic traffic does or paid traffic. So the question is, if I don't have any organic traffic to see how they they behave on my site, how can I tell what pages are bad from a Panda perspective? And John Mueller was asked this, and he gave a very interesting answer. He said, well, buy some paid traffic, even if it's only for a month. Buy some paid traffic in AdWords and watch what they do. Because he said it's keyword-based traffic. That's what he said, quote unquote. Keyword-based traffic will all behave more or less the same. And so get some paid traffic on those keywords that you want to rank for, on those pages you think should do well for those keywords, and see what they do if they go, oh, I'm annoyed, and they go back. Because uh, this will tell you, this will give you a very good metric as to how the organic traffic will behave if and ever you do uh, happen to rank for those keywords or something similar. So that's a great tip. You can do that for a month. And actually, also, I would suggest checking to see how well they convert and if you made your money back. And if, you're, uh, if uh, you made some net profit on, on that traffic. Because if you did, you might want to keep that traffic, right? You might want to keep paying for it as long as you made money. If you paid a thousand bucks for AdWords, but you made two thousand bucks on the traffic, well, you're up a thousand dollars. So, you know, not all paid traffic is evil. And yes, you should get the organic traffic if, if you can, but if you're so badly penalized, you might have to rely on the paid traffic, or you might have to rely on some paid traffic before you can get yourself ranking. But you can definitely get yourself ranking. It's definitely possible to recover from penalties. Uh, I've, I rank hundreds of page, pages uh, on page one. Uh, so um, definitely contact me if you need help doing that. I'm definitely, all I'm saying is, I'm not saying you have to go with paid traffic and that SEO is dead. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying, but don't, don't ignore paid traffic either. It's definitely a valid channel that, that's there. It might, might work for you in the short term and or long term. Okay, here's another very interesting leak. There's two more. Very another interesting leak. Um, Zeneb uh, and John Mueller both implied that there was a sandbox. I know you're rolling your eyes, oh no, not the SEO sandbox, but hear me out. Um, they said that they implied very strongly that, because um, someone asked, you know, I have Panda and Penguin, is that going to hit me harder? And they kind of implied yes. They implied that there was kind of like an extra penalty or maybe like a sandbox or an extra time that's going to take uh, uh, for them to trust your site again and for your site to get out of penalty if you're hit by both Panda and Penguin at the same time. Is that they kind of implied that your site loses all trust and all credibility with them whatsoever. I remember I've long talked about how I think that Google has deranking algorithms, algorithms that will demote you. They have algorithms that will promote you, that will bubble you up, like links, good links demote you like bad links. And I think they have algorithms in the middle that are trust algorithms that check, you know, like Panda, uh, uh, that check the quality of your site, check, give an educated guess as to how good your site is, how people are using your site, what's on your pages, uh, whether it has good content or what looks like kind of garbage text or duplicated text or spun content or no, no images or no, no movies, boring content, those kinds of things. And uh, will not trust your site, right? Especially if they find, uh, and you're hit by both Penguin and Panda, they seem to imply strongly that there's some kind of sandbox or some kind of extra long penalty or some kind of extra penalty they'll add on top that can make it very hard to recover. So this is coming from them. And again, we've speculated as to that. Uh, I've speculated many times as to that possibility, and they, kind of, they very strongly implied it in this December 20th hangout. And finally, Zineb, that's her name, um, mentioned uh, she's new at uh, the Webmaster Trends Analyst, so she's let a few things uh, slip out of her mouth that I don't know if she was supposed to say, but John Mueller is usually a bit more cryptic when it comes to this. So she actually let some stuff uh, leak. So, so this is uh, another thing she mentioned. She basically said, she said point blank that their algorithms, when it comes to do content, Google's algorithms know who published it the vast majority of the time, most of the time. Um, but that you need quality to outrank it. So again, it's this trust and quality factor of not having over-optimization or not having bad usage metrics. Again and again and again, they mention how important this is. And I've mentioned how important this is for all of 2013 and it's not going to go away. It's going to get worse for 2014 as well. Um, so they don't really care who wrote it, but you need higher quality to outrank duplicate uh, content. So, and remember, for Google, when they say trust and quality, 
uh, and relevance, that they mean the same, all that synonymously, and that all has to do with Panda and their trust factors. And so again, as it was in 2013, this is going to be the major problem for webmasters in 2014. And so if you don't know how to diagnose whether you've been hit by Panda or if you have trust or quality problems, contact an SEO who knows how to do it for you. So again, that is this is my first hangout for uh, 2014. As I said, I'm going to be at a conference in Vegas for the next two weeks. I'll be at NMX, which is a blogging conference. And if you're wondering, why is Josh going to a blogging conference? Well, where do you think I find all my link opportunities uh, for guest blog posts? Uh, so uh, I'll be getting links <laughs> for the next two weeks and having a vacation in Vegas. So uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email me at joshbashinsky at gmail.com. But please wait until January 18th or so, and uh, I will get back to you then. I'll be happy to answer any questions for you. So uh, again, uh, watch my videos at youtube.com slash jbashins. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email me. But maybe wait. Give me a vacation. Wait until January 18th. Thanks very much. Good luck in the SERPs. And uh, I intend to still be putting out videos. I'll, I'm going to try and interview some people at uh, NMX and do some videos uh, over the next couple of weeks still. Uh, so I won't leave you hanging for those. So uh, we'll see you uh, hopefully next week, and uh, good luck in the SERPs.